Now, <clears throat> we received a press release this week from someone who wanted to get their name on the television, I'm not going to say it. Uh, now, they say that the standard of your driving gets worse if you're suffering from a cold. And the thing is, they go on to say, OK, um, that uh, it's no good taking a cold remedy because the police say that's the same as driving while under the influence of cocaine. Is it? It's not stupid, though, isn't it? It's not. It's not. It isn't, is it? I think cocaine and Danus are different products entirely. <laughs> well, they're in a different price bracket. They are, I mean, they're entirely <laughs> different. BMW has sent us news of a new Mini. It's a concept, OK? There's a picture of it here. It's a twee little van with Buckingham picked out in old-fashioned sign writing. And it looks like the sort of thing we might have been driving just after we won the war. Oh, for God's sake, <laughs> please, don't go there. Won it. Don't, don't go there. It. They've done this before, haven't they, BMW? Because do you remember a year or so ago, they did a mini, another mini like that, but in the back it had a wickerwork picnic hamper and a silver tea set. <laughs> the point is, we would like to extend an, an, an invitation to people of Germany to come over here, not in a bomber. No, not all um, at once. <laughs> <laughs> not, not all at once, not do it in before in marching. But and not at night. Yeah, no, 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 but come over here as tourists and we'll show you the Shard, for example, in London. Modern skyscraper, we'll show you the Range Rover Evoque. We'll take you to an Adele gig. No, maybe not Adele. <laughs> not right Wi-Fi TV are covering it, because you just get that out of there. Let's move on. The government is holding a big summit to try and find out how to prevent sat-navs accidentally steering people into fields and canals and onto railway lines. You know those cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always reading really I heard this discussed on the TV in the news last week, and one bloke had contacted them to say, I was using my sat-nav, driving along in my car, concentrating, when I drove down a ramp past a lifeboat into the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you weren't concentrating because you drove into the sea. The government summit just needs to say, if you allow your sat-nav to steer you into a field or the sea or a nun, it's your fault because you're a blithering idiot. No, you're, you're so, so, it's yes. so right. It cannot be the sat-nav's fault. It isn't. No, honestly, I, a friend of mine, OK, the, lives in Knightsbridge in the middle of London, wanted to go and see Chelsea play at Stamford Bridge, OK? Put Stamford Bridge into the sat-nav and only realised something was wrong while going past Peterborough on the A1 <laughs> on the way to the town of Stamford Bridge rather than the big football ground. It was, it, how daft do you have to be to do this? It's a well, mile down I was the road. Say, is, is, it can't be more than a mile, but how thick do you have to be to, to believe what a digital pretend woman in the dashboard says over what you can actually see out of the window? I mean, the sea, for example, it's big, it's blue, the top of it wobbles around, and it's not suitable for motor vehicles, but you know that already, you don't drive into it. Hey, now, you know um, sometimes you meet somebody who's got a growth on their face and it's actually bigger than their face? <laughs> you ever seen that? <laughs> No, I mean, one of those really ugly things. No, this is just a face. I'm talking about a growth. Because That's his face? I bring, <laughs> I bring this up because there's a company in Japan who's obviously used this growth thing as an inspiration for their new Prius camper van. Here it is. Oh, God! <laughs> it's the elephant car! It is! And so please, can we Nobody knocks my cathedral over. It's a nice monster! Yes, no, you've got a double bed in the back and then another one in that growth. That is not a car that you could talk to at a party unless you were looking at something else, is it? <laughs> anyway, we must do the news. Uh, we're starting with the Institute of Advanced Motorists. You know the ones? Oh, yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones who... <laughs> You don't, you mustn't cross your hands on the steering wheel, you've got to, so you drive. You've got to shuffle it like that. And never drive one-handed, they don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone here in the Institute of Advanced Motorists? <laughs> like you're going to confess it. <laughs> you yeah, in me! The Institute. So you do this. Did you drive down here today like this? <laughs> you're a passenger. Yeah. Oh, I'll you can knock you. yourself out then. <laughs> <laughs> now, pay attention, everybody. Are you Mario Balotelli or Wayne Rooney or that ginger one? Paul Scholes. <laughs> Does your downstairs lavatory look like this? Nice. <laughs> anyway, if your downstairs loo does look like this and you are a Premiership uh, footballer, good news. Because Bentley has made a new 4x4. Four four. Here it is. Yeah. Oh. yeah no, it is just a concept at the moment, and it is also 
hideous and disgusting. <laughs> Look at it. Did he step away from his design? Go, yes, that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Unless at some point he said, yep, that's my day's work done, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody here like that? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> Seriously? That's because you're sitting behind the television and you can't see it. <laughs> you see, it's not there, it's here. Look. Seriously? <laughs> what do, do you have in your house those pillars either side of the front door that go clang, clang, clang when you hit it? No, I like them. Oh, okay. Have you, got, have you got two fake stone lions on either side of the gate? No, I like them as well. <laughs> this is my big fat gypsy wedding being played out. <laughs> right here, right What's here. What's going on? And there's the car. <laughs> the only way is Cheshire. There you go. <laughs> I've got some news. Cadillac has made a concept car, and here it is. It's called the CL. Oh. Yeah, no, it, looks, it looks astonishing. It's got a twin turbo, a V6 in it. They say it's going back to their roots. What, so it'll rock for five hours after you get out no, of it? No, no. <laughs> Does it have a 400-year-old woman from Florida in it? No, <laughs> no, it's about the sort of grandeur and splendour and scale. It's 19 feet long, so it's enormous, but it's only, it's only 50 inches high, so it's long and low and mean. I'm so like... they've built a plinth, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> yes, but it comes, it comes, they say, with a cigar humidor in it. What, in America? Well, That's like saying this new car for Saudi Arabia with a minibar. Yeah, you couldn't use it, could you? No. This new right. car for Israel. The bonnet's made of bacon. Yeah, don't, don't smoke cigars in America. But it's a magnificent looking thing. Well, there's a new car I want to tell you about. I've got a picture of it. I'm only going to flash it up on the screen for one second and I want you two to tell me what you think it is, OK? Are you ready? Here we go. And on and off. What was that? Uh, Aston, Aston Martin. Martin yeah. There, you see, it wasn't. It wasn't. That, in fact, let's get it up again. That is the new Mondeo. Is it? No, it's actually... Oh, was it done by a Chinese person? No, it was <laughs> <laughs> No, but let me explain, because this is quite complicated. That's been launched in America already as the Ford Fusion, and it's not coming to Britain until next year. So, Ford in Britain are sort of... They're not admitting that that's the new Mondeo, because they think that people won't continue to buy the current one for a year. But that is the new Mondeo, and it's coming next year, so there. <laughs> the Institute of Advanced Motorists has uh, launched a new thing called Drive and Survive. Well, what, rather than Drive and Die? <laughs> yeah, that would, that would never work. Drive and Survive, OK? And w the idea is, OK, what they've got is um, every uh, week they're offering motoring tips, yes? Yeah? So this week it's parking. I'll give you a couple of examples they've come up with, all right? Park on the left-hand side of the road, if possible, and always at night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What happens if you arrive at lunchtime? I parked here this lunch. morning. You didn't. I did, you idiot. <laughs> Park always at night. No, no, there's another one, right? This is one I really can't get. When parking, open your window in car parks and turn off your stereo. You can often hear something before you can see it. <laughs> what? A, what? A lamppost. Well, lampposts actually make a very soft cooing sound. Do they? <laughs> the window down, you can hear. I once heard, like, a squelching sound <laughs> and then a pop, but that was the neighbour's cat. <laughs> can we move on? But now, it's the news. Right, listen. I have got a photograph of the replacement for the Ferrari 599. Here it is. It's called the F12 Berlinetta. <laughs> it's smaller um, than a 599, which is a good thing. It's also lighter, and it's more powerful. It's got a 730-horsepower V12. 730. V12? V12. Are you not the same Mr. So-called Jeremy Clarkson who, on this programme but a month ago, driving the Lamborghini Aventador, said, this is the last of the V12s from now on, all engines <laughs> will have turbos on them. You did say that. I did say that. And now how do you feel? Foolish. <laughs> I did actually you were, say... You were really unequivocal on that. I was unequivocal, but I was wrong. <laughs> yes. For the first time since 1974. <laughs>
<laughs> Can I just get you the Fister, right? Yeah, it's Fisker. It's a K. <laughs> it's a K. <laughs> it's... I it's... thought that was a stupid name. Let's just... just move on. Fisker. Can I yes, just okay. clear it up? You have the traditional electric car, all electric, like a Nissan Leaf and a G Wiz. Now, that's just batteries, and you have to charge them up at night, yeah? Yes. Then you have stupid hybrids, like the Toyota Prius, mm -hmm. which are normal cars that have electric motors for a bit of extra power, yeah? Yes. So the Fisker is what? It's actually a petrol engine car, but in a normal car, you get the power from the engine to the back wheels through a gearbox and shafts and so on. On this one, you use the generator and the electric motors. I'm lost. Don't... It's, it's a more efficient way of tapping the energy in the fuel. That's why it accelerates like a, like a 400 horsepower GT car, but it only uses as much fuel no, as a no, mid-size No, I just don't understand cylinder. how it works. I can't dumb it down to your level, because I'm scared of heights. <laughs> That's the problem. No, listen. It's energy, you use it to drive the wheels. You get more of it by using that system. People get confused. They talk about electric energy. Just, <laughs> just, tell, energy. Him, just tell him it's magic it's electric. Magic. It's magic electric pixies. There are fairies in the car driving. That's, what, that's all you needed to say. But it's that's not actually how it works. I'm not bothered, actually. I'm not interested. Let's do the news. When did it happen that somebody decided that driving was so unbelievably hard, you can't do it while doing something else, you know, like listening to Ken Bruce's Popmaster or talking on the telephone. Honestly, I can't think of anything that I couldn't do while driving, oh, really? apart from reading a broadsheet newspaper. I wouldn't be able to do that. Sawing a piece of wood. I could do that. You can't even hold wood, you can't no, do it. No, 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 you put it between your legs. You still operate the pedals. Uh, and you can <laughs> saw... Sewing on a button. You need both hands to use this video. No, I could do that. You could not I drive. could. You know you can't sew on a button with a hammer, don't you? you I know <laughs> how to sew. Actually, while we're on the subject, did you see that um, case recently? A woman who was stopped by the police after they caught her driving down a motorway while causing herself to have pleasure. <laughs> well, I bet you can't drive in a sleeping bag. I'm not sure. Actually, I'm going to take that back. I think you could drive in this. If you, if you, you couldn't drive in a sleeping bag. I bet you. I bet I could. You can't. I bet I could drive in a sleep. I. Like there you go. <laughs> right, you're wrong. Sometime this week, before next week's show, I'll take you one round the track. You drive in a proper cocoon sleeping with your arms in it. Yeah. And race me, <laughs> and I'll sew a button right, okay. on my shirt. Oh, let me guess. I'm going to drive whilst performing an act on myself. <laughs> No. We'll leave you, short race. So we leave you out of it. We're making a 50 yard sprint. Yeah. <laughs> we must now do the news and we begin with this. What is the worst thing in the world? Trying on trousers. <laughs> no, he's right, actually, you're right. Trying on trousers is the worst thing worst in the world. Thing. But the second worst thing in the world is when you're going on a journey somewhere and someone in the car says, Do you mind if we stop for some reason? Oh, look, there's an ancient monument. You think, I don't want to go and look at an ancient monument, but I want to go and look at my friends. Go, we're going to see Unseen for five years. No, no, you're yeah, absolutely right, because there are some people who they stop on a journey at a, at a motorway services to play a fruit machine. No, it's worse than that. There's people, there's people who say, I need to stretch my legs. If you're Alec Guinness and you've been in a box in a Japanese prisoner of war camp for six months, yes, you need to stretch your legs, but after 30 <laughs> miles in a car, you don't. But it's when people say they need to stop to eat. I've got to stop to eat. Why? I can't imagine a journey long enough that means you are going to need refuelling. It's not... Well, if you were driving from Cairo to Khartoum... Yes, but not if in Britain. If you're going from Leicester to Birmingham, you don't need food. You're not going to starve in that time. Last week, we revealed that the police were claiming that driving under the influence of a cold remedy is the same as driving under the influence of cocaine. Now, I drove down here, because I've got a cold that I haven't mentioned, um, I drove down here this morning having taken some day nurse, yeah. and Did I arrived without incident. Did it make you very boring and overly confident at parties? No, I'm always that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was, I was yeah, that anyway. Uh, so I'm just letting you know, day nurse and driving are OK. I made it. Yeah, on that subject, actually, last week, you agreed, in fact, you challenged James to do a lap of the track. You would be sewing on a button at the mm -hmm. same time as driving to mm -hmm. prove you can do two things. He would be in a sleeping bag whilst Yes, driving. and you would be giving yourself pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was Those the race. Were the, those are the rules. So, are we going to have our race? We did promise. Yeah, I forgot my sleeping bag, sir. Oh, mate, I've been practising all week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I promise we will do our sleeping bag, uh, sewing a button on and ham and race before the end of the series. <laughs> One of the places I could never understand why people stopped at was um, Little Chef. 
Yes. Because what they did... No, no, really. What they did was they took ingredients and then ruined them. I can let you know that I once stopped at a little chef very early in the morning and I said, could I have an omelette? And the woman said, no, I'm sorry, sir, the powder hasn't arrived yet. That's not a good sign, is it? I once dropped a sausage from my plate in Little Chef and it bounced. <laughs> it's out of old squash balls. <laughs> now, the other day we heard that they'd shut, getting on for half their, um, their outlets, as it were. And we weren't the slightest bit surprised, but the other day we stopped at one that was still open. And I went in and the guy said, he gave me this paper cup and he said, it's a, it's a casserole mash. Now, I thought, that's just going to be bits of placenta... Oh, God. <laughs> ..garnished with the chef's bodily fluids. Nice. <laughs> Second see. nicest thing I've ever put in my mouth. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay. It yeah, was... The, it was tremendous. brilliant. You oh, I loved it, to be honest. But you know why it is? It's because they've got um, Heston Blumenthal doing the, the Little Chef menu. Yeah, and he cut his teeth, didn't he, in Heston services? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are, um... Proposals this week in the corridors of power that um, anyone who passes their driving test must be accompanied for the first few years on the road by an experienced sober person who's over 25. You can kind of see why they think that's a good idea, though, can't you? Because, you know, that's the well, stupidest idea I've ever heard of. <laughs> it, the stupidest. Okay, I have spent 17 years ferrying my daughter about. Last month, she passed her driving test, which means it's now her turn to ferry me about, specifically to and from the pub. <laughs> OK? Now, what's the point if she gets to the pub and she can't run me home if I've had a drink? It doesn't work. Actually, no, it's more complicated than that, because she couldn't get to the pub to pick you up because she couldn't drive there on her own anyway, so... It... So she'd have to get an older boyfriend? Yeah. Well, that'd be, hello, Dad, have you met Keith? He's 53. <laughs> Why are you looking so excited? Well, <laughs> he's brought his teenager with him. <laughs> are you just her experienced driver? Because this is properly embarrassing for you think if that's not what's friend, happening. Think of me as a kindly experienced driver, my dear. It's <laughs> right. like Seriously, it. though, the government ought to recognise that without the sort of young people who tear around in cars, we wouldn't have won the Battle of Britain. That is a fact. It is a fact, actually. Teenagers. They sleep and they tear about. It's what they do. Yeah. yeah. And they have more sex than us. They do, they do they don't that. get fat yeah. and they don't get hangovers. That's it's just true. better than No, no, basically, <laughs> everybody else, the rest of us are just old and bitter. Yes. That's what <laughs> it is. Young is better. Young, young is, is better. better. And the government should, instead of saying they children have to have old people with them when they're driving around, should just say to my daughter, go to the pub and pick your dad up. <laughs>
Citroen has sent us a picture of this. Now, this is a sporty version of the DS4, and I think it looks rather good. 256 horsepower from its 1.6 litre turbo engine. Same engines as you get in a Mini Cooper, actually. Not and bad. I think that looks rather good. Yeah, not bad. I prefer this, so if you have a look at this, this is the uh, Renault Megane 265. Which has got... 265. Let me guess how many horsepower that's Have got. a go. Is it 312? No. Is it eight? No. What is it? 265. Is it? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's quite a powerful car, and it's got the clever diff. It has a cup chassis, it's got, you know, stiffened springs and all that sort of thing. It's £26,000, which is sort of Golf GTI money. So I have to say, I think that looks absolutely brilliant, yes. except <laughs> for the red... Brake calipers. What's yeah. wrong with red brake calipers? Well, how empty and shallow and pointless and meaningless must your life be for you to say, yes, I'd like red brake calipers? <laughs> I've got red brake calipers on my <laughs> 500 Twin Air. They look cute, they look great. They're... Why have you got them? Well, because when I bought it, the man in the shop said, would you like red brake calipers? And I said, yes, I would. And then... <laughs> but, Alan, I was once in a pub and a man came up to me and he said, do you want a smack in the mouth? And I said, no, because you can't say no. <laughs> No, no, they you see. Right. Did you have to pay extra for them? Yes. How much? 300 quid. <laughs> but they look great. You How do you explain that to your family? I'm sorry, kids, we can't go to Countrywide for our lunch this <laughs> week. <laughs> because Debbie spent all the money painting his brake calipers. Hold red. on a minute. What? He said they were 300 quid. They won't be able to go to Countrywide all year. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, Mr F1 fan, I'm braced and ready for your comments. Go. I agree with you. Eh? I do agree with you. The Americans are very bad at some things. They can't say aluminium. <laughs> and they can't win a war without our help. But <laughs> they are very good at making dreary sports very exciting to watch. Let's just take, for an example, Rounders, right? That's played by small children here. Over there, it's Babe Ruth and a religion. And then you've got netball, which here is just a lot of schoolgirls standing so they can only move one foot, and there's four parents watching. And over there, it's the... What is it? Harlem Globetrotters. The mighty Alfa Romeo, they are reduced now to a full range of cars. They make two. Two cars. Really? That, that is, yes. The well, the Julietta. Mito and the... Julietta and the Mito. That so is they it. don't make the 159 anymore? Nope, nope. Just two Alfa Romeos on the market. But that's about to change because they have just announced this, the 4C. Look at that. I know. It's tiny. It's a small, lightweight sports car. Very lightweight. Carbon fibre, all sorts of clever technical stuff. Mid-engined. It's only a 1750cc engine, but it's turbocharged, so it will be quick because it's so light. And it looks... I think that looks fantastic. It's wrong, is what it is. Wrong. What Alfa Romeo should make is a small convertible two-seater, engine at the front, rear-wheel drive, and they could call it, I don't know, the... Spider? Spider's a great name. A good name and then yeah. maybe they could get <laughs> Dustin Hoffman to appear in a yes. film in it to etch it into the world's yes, consciousness. Yes, they could do that. They could live in the past. Or they could make something modern and forward-looking instead. No like rubbish. That. What if you two had been at Alfa Romeo when they came up with the original Spider? Well, that's no good. Where's the horse in front of it? <laughs> it's not made of wood. That'll never work. It's modern and forward-looking. It's I not modern and forward-looking. End of this year, I'm looking forward to it. Make it go away. A couple of years ago, Ferrari brought out a car called the 599 XX, a picture of it here, OK? Now, it's slightly unusual, this, because it cost you a million quid, but you couldn't take it home with you. Ferrari kept it, OK? Uh, and nor could you drive it on the road, even if you wanted to, because it's not road legal, and you couldn't sell it without Ferrari's permission. Now, the only thing you could do was ring Ferrari and say, could you take it to such and such a track? You can have a couple of laps in it, and then they'd take it away again. Yeah. Did anybody actually fall for this? Yeah, 30 people. They bought 30 it. people? Well, that's a good deal. That is a good deal. <laughs> oh, I'll have one of those. Pounds. And now Ferrari is saying to these 30 people, if you give us another £200,000, we'll fit the car you don't actually have with a rear spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> 200. <laughs> Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand pounds for that rear spoiler. What's it made from? Spoiler material. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, it's one of those. You know, well, you won't know, but it's a DRS spoiler, like you get in Formula One. I know that they sell sofas. <laughs> it's a DRS one, so it opens and closes depending on whether you go around the corner or going down the straight. Can I just say, who are these thirty people that bought those things? I want their email addresses because I'd like to sell them a clock. <laughs> what clock? It's really big, 
it's on like a tower in London next to the Houses of Parliament. And I can sell it to <laughs> them. Could they take it home with them? No, they couldn't take it home, but it'll be their clock. Good marketing. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I have some news. There is a new Dodge Viper being announced, and apparently it's going to employ Fiat technology on it, which is... Well, what they mean is there's a new Dodge Viper and it won't work properly. Is that basically... <laughs> well, I've said that. I suspect that Dodge are a little worried about the styling they've chosen because this is the photograph they've sent. <laughs> it doesn't tell you much, it does doesn't, it? It doesn't maybe, tell you a lot, does it? Maybe it's shy. <laughs> Germans need to come here, OK? They really do. They need to come here and understand we're not driving around in twee little vans tugging our forelocks at the squire anymore. No, but it's, very, it's true, because they are obsessed with this, the Germans. Bless them. They always say, oh, we love your England, with your clean and your little houses, mitt out as electricity. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should go over to Germany with mullets and leather shorts and wander about whistling scorpion tunes and see how they like <laughs> racial stereotyping, which we don't do. <laughs> Whiplash is a charter for fraudsters. I know what you no, mean. we all know this, OK, because you have a car accident, you go, oh, I've got whiplash, and then you rate the other motorist's insurance policy <laughs> and you get benefits for the rest of your life. Now, the government has said that this has to stop. So, they have announced, the government, right, that um, if the impact speed is less than six and a quarter miles an hour, you can't have whiplash. Six and a quarter? Six and a quarter. But then they're also saying if it's, like, six and a half, you could get whiplash. Yeah. At that speed. Yeah. You can do that speed sitting down quickly. Look, I'm doing about six and a half. I've got wind. I'll just do here. It should be 63 miles an hour. But that would least... be a reasonable speed. The question should be is your car absolutely and entirely wrecked? Is it, is it crumpled like a discarded crisp bag? In which case you might have it. Has the boot lid badge been stenciled onto your own spine? <laughs> Then you've got wet. Could be. No, no, it's not. It's can you actually look up your own arse now? It... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you've possibly yeah. got some whiplash. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Honestly, I really do genuinely believe this. People who claim they've got whiplash when they haven't, I don't believe in capital punishment, but they should be shot. <laughs> really? Where would you shoot them? In the head. <laughs> no, I, mean, <laughs> I meant more sort of. Geographically, yeah. Where would you oh, yes. On their own or in front of anyone? Do you want to say that? In front of the hog. Let's just sort it out. Usually goes well when you do. Maybe on a different show. Let's just just get it just so we can straighten out your belief. Who do you think should be shot? Where? And in front of whom? <laughs> just tell us that. Uh, oh, now moving it on. Um... <laughs> They are quite easily amused. The they're Americans. unbelievably easily amused, and that's why they're able to make NASCAR exciting. It's just some good old boys going round in a circle, and they go, oh, hell, I go pay to watch that. 250,000 people turn up to watch because it. Because it is a good sport. It's a great yeah, thing to watch. Hammond, you would say that because you're an American. Not an American! <laughs> oh, I'm not. not. Hammond, you what, you've got a Stetson, you've got cowboy boots, you've got chaps, you've got a Harley Davidson, you've got a Mustang, you'd like to get a beer, and you put cheese on everything. I, I don't! <laughs> American. You have made a living out of being an American. Your Saturday I... night programme is a fat man falling off some foam rubber. <laughs> All right, hey, we'll watch that. <laughs> and they turn up, they turn up in their millions. And he has a hat on. I'm not an American. Some actual news. Oh, don't be daft. What, in our news section? In the news section. <laughs> yes, it's not just rubbish. Careful, we're in uncharted waters here. OK. <clears throat> I have it on good authority that Land Rover is currently working on a 300 horsepower convertible version of the new Evoque. The Evoque? Really? Yeah. Ooh, have you got a picture? No, 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 no. I've got, well, I've got a picture here of the hard time one, because it's so secret, this. Only I know it. Well, not only I, everybody now knows about it. <laughs> so I thought, look, you Stand can... back, he's got scissors! Oh, 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 oh. oh, look at him concentrate. Look at him now. I see... <laughs> It's the Top Gear orangutan. Look at his happy little face, completely absorbed in his own world. And if you watch very carefully, everybody, you can see Jeremy's mouth moving in time. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's quite tricky going down the door. It's a tricky windscreen bit now, isn't it? Ready? And across the line. 
attitude was quite good, didn't it? It's quite good. <laughs> All right. And am I right in saying that would be the first ever convertible off-road car? Yeah, well, apart from uh, the original Willys Jeep and the first Toyota Land Cruiser <laughs> yeah. and the original Land Rover, but apart from that, yeah. Apart from the very, <laughs> the very origins, genesis, the whole foundation, if you will, of the entire concept of off-roader is founded upon a convertible. Yeah. Other yeah. Than... Did I say that out loud? You did, and yeah. we all heard it. <laughs> that is a bit like saying they should make a song called Blue Suede Shoes. Yes, they should. Yeah, <laughs> done that before. <laughs> OK, this is the new uh, Maserati 4x4, OK? I think it looks fantastic, uh, but there are some odd things about it. Maserati say that unlike any other big 4x4, it has a luxury atmosphere. Because, you know, every time I get in a Range Rover, I always think, oh, no, I've accidentally got into a cow shed. Yeah. <laughs> and then they say there are no off-roaders that give a sporty feel. Well, what about the Porsche Cayenne? Or the Mercedes ML63. BMW X5. Exactly. All, that, all of yeah. that. Yeah. It's, I think Maserati, they're the sort of company that go, you know, we've invented a new type of watch, and what makes it really good is you can wear it on your wrist. <laughs> this is quite awkward, isn't it? Because somebody's going to have to tell them, hey, Maserati, it's been done. It's actually there. Yeah, not gonna, what I love about this, though, is it's called the Kubang, right? Which, being a Maserati, is the noise it will make the day the warranty runs out. <laughs> Richard, tell me. When you go to work at the BBC in London, where do you park your car? Well, Jeremy, I park it in the car park at the BBC, underground, yeah. where everybody else parks. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, where do you park? I park in the underground car yeah. park. It's a bit of a walk, but that's what you're that's supposed you to park. do. Yeah. Now, there is a loading bay just outside our office, which is a lot more convenient, but obviously there's no parking there. Now, I took a photograph in this loading bay this week, OK? Here it is. Now, we may recognise this car if we watch The Apprentice. It belongs to Lord Sir Sugar. Yeah, but to be fair, his chauffeur was probably loading him into the building at the time. Exactly. So it could be in Technically, bed. this was a delivery, so that's yes. fine. More worrying is this. OK, if we zoom in. Now, right there, there's a little Fiat Panda parked, blocking the door, and the honest working men whose job is to deliver things to the BBC. Mm. And I'm wondering, Hammond, who has a little black Fiat Panda? Oh, no! <laughs> at the BBC? Does David Attenborough? No, he doesn't. Paxman. <laughs> Moving on. OK, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the three of us went motor racing. Now, uh, this is for something that you'll see in next week's show. Yeah. I bring it up now, though, because I discovered, while racing against Hammond, that he is actually Alan Prost. Really? Oh, yes, you mean like the professor calculating yep. and... Uh... No, not, not that, no. What I mean is that when he has lost the corner to a superior driver, <laughs> he tries to ram that driver off the road. I did not! You I did. remember the corner. No, I rubbed you at most. I you rub. rubbed me like David Hay rubbed that man in Germany. That wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> I just ran a bit. I ran a lead on you at most. I ran one. Hang on a minute, because I wasn't in this race, but I was watching it yep. from a grassy knoll. And I was. <laughs> I think Hammond behaved correctly. Thank you. I did. There were onboard cameras in his car. OK, so next week we'll have a look at the footage and you'll see him going... No, 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 you're absolutely right. The onboard footage will be the, the key to it, but I will be the steward, because I was I shall adjudicate you, on this. I'm not having you good. judging. Well, you can't even play a game of Monopoly without cheating. No, you can't. Oh, <laughs> he did, he did he cheat did, at Monopoly. I did, I did, he did. Monopoly not. And he cheated. We played for four hours and you cheated. I did not You cheat. ruined the game. You I made did. it... Put, you robbed the bank. There was a... <laughs> There was a bank robbery, but you don't get those in Monopoly, and I thought it would make it more authentic if the bank was robbed. <laughs> you stole it! So you're a, you're a I, cheat, a liar, I and a burglar! The role. If I'm going to use a judge for this motor racing incident, I'm going to use Ofcom, because they are wise. Don't go there. Don't, don't go there. And you, you are going to be shot in front of your family. <laughs> oh. Something it turns out... You can say that oh, on television, it turns out. Yeah, what you've done there, Jeremy, is, is take your leg out of the bear trap, turn around and put your head in instead. <laughs> oh, you're an idiot. Anyway, that is the end of the news.